Welcome to the MLMSuccess.com podcast, the show designed to return the network marketing industry to its roots of personal growth, leadership development, and wisdom of the ages success principles. We share with you real success stories from real people that we hope will inspire and encourage you personally and help you progress forward in your business and your life. We believe if you build people, people will build the business. Now here is your host who has been called the number one mind in network marketing, the MLM Profit, Network Marketing Virtual Mentor, and a host of other names that we will not mention because this is a family show. Frankly, he's just a small town guy that figured out that the real product in network marketing is people. Dale Calvert. Hey guys, this is Dale Calvert. I'd like to welcome you to this session of the MLMSuccess.com podcast. I appreciate you being here. I hope you've had a productive, productive week. Uh, we certainly have here. And, uh, you know, it is what it is, right? I haven't, I've just had my head down grinding on multiple different projects. Uh, I haven't really even looked up much and, uh, which is the way I kind of always operate, but probably more than normal. I know Georgia is opening back up. I don't know if that's different from any other state. Again, I, I, I just haven't paid any attention to it. Uh, I look at the, the numbers reported cases every day. And other than that, doesn't matter to me. Only thing else I know about Corona is uh, what I hear through conversations with people or what have you. So uh, I know that Dawn got to go back to the her hairdresser this week, and she was thrilled about that, that it opened up. Uh, I'm thinking I might just let mine grow down my back and, and uh, grow a beard and just not cut my hair or shave for a while. I haven't decided yet. Regardless, this week I've got a real, real, real important idea, concept that I want to share with you guys. Uh, before we get into that, just a couple of things. I was reading an article in, uh, I think it was Psychology Today Online. It was something, and it was talking about how people, there's a, a lot of people that use comedy during times of crisis to help relieve stress off their minds and their bodies. And for me, I love a good comedian, always have, probably always will. And there's a lot of really good comedians, talented people in the market. Uh, you know, uh, several really good ones, some that people have never heard, not really mainstream, but are really talented. But this week, uh, if that's you, you know, it's, it talked about in the article how a lot of people are just really spending more time you know, checking out comedians and comedy skits and stuff online and the number of memes that are being created around this corona and all that. And again, I haven't noticed one way or the other myself, but I did uh, want to share a video with you and it talks about the stereotypes of, of people, how different stereotypes, it talks about five or six different stereotypes of how different people are handling the corona virus and I thought it was really interesting because you know as human beings we see things not as they are we see things as we are um you know I I, I was out today we had uh, uh some 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 shipping that we needed to do we missed uh, after the post office and UPS had done their run and uh, we wanted to get some shipping out. And uh, so I ran to the post office today, and it's like I'm I'm not out much, you know. I just I'm not I'm just not. But it was like um, I'll go in the post office, and it's and it's like all these people wearing masks. It's like, you know, me and and this other lady were the only two that didn't. But all I had to do is walk in, put it on the counter, and leave because we do the prepaid postage, so it's no big deal. But it it was just kind of it, it was kind of interesting to me because. I have always believed when it's when it's your time to go, it's your time to go, and 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 I just don't worry too much about it one way or the other. You know, I'm going to live every day the fullest I possibly can. I'm going to make the most out of every day, enjoy my 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 the people in my life, and I'm just not going to stress too much one way or the other. And for me, maybe that's built into my DNA to be able to do that. And the, 
this article was talking about how for some people comedy was that relief. And I ran across this, this skit and I just thought I was going to share it with you guys. I think you'll find it funny. I did. I thought they were very talented. The people that put this skit together, very, very, very funny, very talented and very telling is to, again, as human beings, we see things not as they are, but as we are. So you can check that out if you want to. It's at poop. Poop, P-O-O-P, poopheadvideos.com forward, forward slash quarantine. I think that's Q-U-A-R-A-N-T-I-N-E. Poopheadvideos.com forward slash quarantine. I hope it gives you a smile on your face. Uh, last month, I conducted 50 free 20-minute consultants c- consultations with MLM Training Club members. Um, that was in April. And if you're an MLM Training Club member, yes, you did get the email. If you missed it, I'm sorry. If you didn't read it or it ended up in your spam box, then you need to whitelist the email. But I conducted over 50 of these 20 minute phone consultations. And I know that many of you that listen to this podcast every week were part of that. Or got in on the 20 minute consultation and it was really insightful for me. And I'm going to talk a lot more in the future down the road about many of the things I learned. And I really, really enjoyed meeting a lot of you over the phone through the, for, for the very first time. And, you know, I just want to provide this service for network marketing training club members, just something that I could do during this different times that we're going through uh, but honestly, I believe I got as much out of it as any of you. So I, I just want to thank all of you that participated in that. And I can tell you guys that moving forward, uh, I'm really going to be depending more on feedback from training club members, podcast listeners, and so on and so forth uh, as far as content for this particular podcast. And you can all, every comment that's left over at MLMHelp.com. Uh, I try to see and reply to, uh, even on social media over it on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash, uh, Del Calvert page. You know, I do as well. I, I, I try to be as responsive as possible. Sometimes it might take a while, but I do try to respond and, and I do want you to know that I sincerely appreciate it. it I, I see it and, and it, it means more to me than you guys will ever know. Uh, just for from an insight perspective. Uh, I appreciate all the nice things you say. I sincerely do. But just for my insight and awareness, uh, I depend upon you in the marketplace. And many of you I know and trust your input and your judgment. And it just helps a lot. But earlier this week, I talked with uh, a gentleman from New Jersey. It's real interesting. Uh, he's a Shackley distributor, and he and his brother actually inherited their business from their parents. Their parents built this huge Shackley organization, and they both passed, and his brother and him inherited it. Now, how cool is that, guys? How cool is that? I've only met one other person uh, that, that like that. In my lifetime, but that's one of the major, major benefits of this business is you really can build a legacy income, an income that can be passed down to your kids and your grandkids. It's phenomenal from that standpoint. So he was living in New Jersey, getting ready to move to Florida where his brother is. And, you know, they had a partnership and going to run their business. And it was just a great talk, great conversation. Uh, interesting guy, but in the conversation, he shared with me that one of my mentors, and if you've heard me speak on any podcast or webinar, you've heard me mention this name many times. One of my mentors, Jim Burke, had passed away a few weeks ago. Uh, and I did an article about Jim Burke where I get in a lot more detail than I'm going to in this session. But Jim was a super, super human being. Uh, I was not in his direct downline. Uh, I can say that if it wasn't for Jim Burke 
finding Jim Burke audio cassettes back in the day, uh, I probably would have never made it in network marketing. I can I can almost say that with 100% certainty. But I did a I did a article about that. I'll put the link in the show notes for you guys. I hope you'll go check it out. It's over at mlmhelp.com, and it's actually a long link. It's a tribute to Shackley Master Coordinator Jim Burke with a dash between every word. So I don't expect you to memorize that. But uh, so, but that really got me thinking because you know I've had four mentors in my life. Uh, my dad, Jim Burke. Zig, who got me started on the right track, and of course, Jim Rohn. And it got me thinking about those those mentors that I've had and how important they were and the, the unique bond that we had, at least I had. Um, and it really got me thinking about the importance of mentorship and finding the right mentor and how, you know, managers, business managers learn from professors, but leaders learn from mentors. Leaders learn from mentors. And it really got me thinking about this when, after this conversation that I had and learning about Jim's passing. I was sad to hear that. And I, th- I thought about the two times that I met him in my life and then the letter that I'd sent him probably 15, 20 years ago. And I hope that that, that connected with him. And um, again, I'm not going to rehash the whole article that I wrote, but you can go check it out if you want. But it got me on this path. And then, you know, Dawn has been, I mean, cleaning, going through our garage like a mad woman the last couple of weeks going through stuff that we probably should have went through years ago. She's just taking advantage of this time. And I mean, crazy stuff. And, and, uh, right after, um, our, around this time, after having this conversation with this gentleman in New Jersey about Jim Burke and Shackley master coordinator, Jim Burke, um, she came in and she found uh, uh, these notes, three pages of notes. that was in an old briefcase that normally we would have thrown away, but she looks through every pocket and everything, and she found these notes in the compartment of this briefcase. And it was actually the notes that I used when I introduced Jim Rohn to our organization in Dayton or in Daytona Beach, Florida in 2000. Now, I know many of you are, if you're a training club member or you're a member of uh, localmlmleads.com, then the three-hour event that Jim did for our group is a bonus uh, training that's part, I think, of those two programs. I think it's those two. I I may be wrong, but I know that I think it's probably training club, but it might be both of them. I don't know. But that three hour training was phenomenal. The best Jim Rohn training ever recorded. Many people would say that. And uh, that was the first time I ever introduced Jim. And that was early. That was like maybe in 95, 96. And then a few years later in 2000, I introduced him again in Daytona. And, and honestly, at that time in my life, uh, if, if I had to be 100% truthful, which I will be uh, without getting into any detail, but at that time in my life, I really feel like I was in the middle of a nervous breakdown, honestly. And that's all I need to say about that. But I... I Looking back, it's like I can't believe that I lived through that that period. And but anyway, she found these notes, and it was I can remember distinctly sitting in the hotel. It was like four four o'clock in the morning. I was 
going to be introducing Jim Rome for the second time in my life uh, that morning at 9 o'clock, and I had a notepad, and I wrote out my introduction, and I finished it, you know, just in time to take a shower, get to the auditorium and introduce him. Uh, didn't type it up or anything. I just had my three pieces of paper, and I introduced him. And in that intro, I talked a lot about mentorship. And, you know, she found it. Honestly, I probably would have forgot that I ever introduced him twice because the first one was the one that uh, many people uh, have the the um, recordings from that event. Uh, I don't even know what happened to the second, if it was even recorded. I don't have a clue. It was out of my hands at that point. But So I probably would have forgot it, forgot what I said. It would have been, you know, gone. But she found the notes, and I read it, and she handed it to me. I'm thinking, did you read this? She said, no, I didn't read it, but I knew you would probably want to hang on to it. And I think, golly, this is, this is just deep, and it's so true. It's just phenomenally true about the relationship people can develop and that I developed uh, with Jim Rohn. So... We have actually, I took that and I made that part of an article as well. I just typed it out, you know, so it's online now and anybody can read it. I'm going to share that with you in a minute. But what I really want to talk about, and I want you to really think about, if I said, who's your mentor? Who's your, who's your personal development mentor? Who's your financial mentor? Who's your network marketing mentor? Who's your spiritual mentor who's your health mentor we can have multiple mentors in our lives and and i've said many times i sincerely believe that you should have one network marketing mentor mine was jim burke and then i had dozens of personal development mentors Per, because personal development, it really is all the same thing. It's just how people communicate it. It, it really comes down to brain cell patterns, what the mind can conceive and believe you can achieve, expectations. It really comes down to how you're programmed and how, how do you take the negativity and cancel, cancel, get it out of your mind and stay in a state of productivity and, ex, and high expectations. And so personal development, I mean, I listened to Zig, of course, Jim Rohn was my, you know, Jim Rohn was the guy. He was, you know, the guy for many. Uh, but Dr. Wayne Dyer, Les Brown, uh, the list goes on and on and on of different mentors that I've had over the years as it relates to personal development. But when it comes to network marketing, there was only one, and that was Jim Burke. And once I heard Jim, uh, and and I really heard him, you know, you have to hear somebody a few times before you hear them. And, but once I really heard him, then, you know, I had hundreds of audio cassettes. But from that point on, once that decision was made, Jim Burke's the man you know, I, I've got over 200 audio cassettes from Jim Burke, and I never, I never listened to another network marketing teacher, trainer, consultant after that, except him, because this guy was at a different level. Actually, in its his obituary, they said he was always ahead of the trend, and man, he was. He was just, he was just at a different level. He was a different level of understanding about what network marketing really is. I mean, he's the one that taught me that we're in the leadership development business. And when I say he taught me, I don't mean he sat down and we talked and he taught me. I mean, through audios, through his audios. I have no doubt that I learned more from that man than all of his people in his organization. And he had the third largest organization in Shackley, the third largest one. But I can tell you that I learned more from him than anybody on his team because what's that? Bible verse about being a prophet in your own hometown or something. People don't respect their uplines sometimes or people that 
they see every day at the same level. And um, I spent five minutes around him my entire life. I met him twice. Uh, and he was just so impactful for me, as was Zig, as was Jim. And I am so thankful that my dad's still with me. Uh, I love my dad dearly, and he, he's been my number one supporter in my life through all of the all the things that we've gone through and all the projects that I've been involved in, even as a kid, you know, from Magic taking me around to baseball card shows and before I was old enough to drive and making sure I got to the Magic birthday parties when I was performing Magic, and I could go on and on and on about my dad. He's a saint. And he's an unbelievable example. He set an unbelievable example for me that I'm so thankful I've had in my life. So anyway, uh, so along these lines, recently there was a new study that was put together by the Service Corps of Retired. It's called SCORE. It's the Service Corps of Retired Executives. You guys have probably heard of SCORE before. They support their nonprofit organization as volunteer corporate executives that help and mentor small business owners. And they came out with a new study here recently, and it said that the new study reveals entrepreneurs need more mentoring. I'm going to put a link in the article where you can read it. It's really, really interesting. Uh, and I'm just going to hit some of the highlights, and then I want to get into how this relates to network marketing because I believe that mentoring in the real world and traditional business and mentoring in network marketing is two totally different things, it's two totally different business models. It just is. But I think the concept and the, and the validity and the importance of mentoring it is something that needs to be thought about. And see, there's a lot of you that I know listening to me right now. Dale, I'm self-motivated. I know what to do. I don't need a mentor. And I know people believe that. And there is a, a mentoring paradox in network marketing. There's a yin and a yang. And I want, I'm going to talk about that. But I just want to share a couple of things from this article. It's, it says, it's common wisdom that from the behind every great leader is a, is a great mentor. An advisor. Steve Jobs had Ed Woodland and John Schooley. Bill Gates considered Warren Buffett as a mentor. Bob Iger, I'm not sure if that's how you say his last name, the Disney dude. Bob Iger credits his former boss, Tom Murphy, not only with his success at Walt Disney, but also for having inspired the mentorship program that was introduced through Disney. It says, while most entrepreneurs don't have world-famous executive mentoring, the importance of such interactions is obvious. According to an analysis conducted by Endeavor, a nonprofit organization that supports high-impact entrepreneurs across the world, Companies whose founders have been mentored by top-performing entrepreneurs are three times more likely to go on to become top performers themselves. Interesting. However, connecting with mentors is important for every entrepreneur as well, according to Cabbage, Inc., a global financial services technology and data platform company recently surveyed more than 2,000 small business owners throughout the U.S. to evaluate the importance of mentorship for their group. Their findings kind of prove the point. Only 22% of small businesses had mentors when they started their business. Another 17% indicated they have or had an advisor, possibly a paid relationship with a consulting a consultant for advice. This leaves 63% of business owners who do not have professional guidance at the onset of their business. The statics for new business failure are 20% of small businesses fail their first year, 30% of small businesses fail their second year, and 50% fail after five years, which directly co correlates with the numbers with the numbers that 
said they had mentors and those that said they did not. 92% of small business owners agree that mentors have a direct impact on the growth and survival of their business. In a separate, a separate Kabaj report revealed 84% of small businesses reach profitability in their first four years of their business with 68% attaining profitability in their first year if they have an advisor or a mentor. Of all the respondents, 89% of small business owners who didn't have a mentor said they wish they did. The study shows that 61% of current small business owners mentor or mentor others and 50% specifically mentor younger entrepreneurs. In reality, finding an appropriate mentor is not problematic as it is recognizing the need for guidance. If you already have a mentor, fabulous. If you don't, now is the perfect time to reach out and find one. So again, I'm going to put the entire article. It was just kind of the headlines from it. Uh, I'll put it in the article that I'm going to share with you at the end here that we did on just mentorship for network marketing. I'm not going to have a lot of time to get into a lot of detail on this. There's a lot more than I can cover in this podcast. Uh, but my main focus is, is again, when I look back at Jim Rohn and Jim Burke and the impact that they had, I never will forget when I heard that Zig Ziglar had died. I mean, Ron Henley sent me a text and asked me if I'd heard, and I hadn't. And it's like the impact that those people have had on my life, it's really hard to communicate. You know, I don't think I can made it in network marketing without a, without the right mentors. The personal development mentors, many of them, who mean so, meant so much to me, but especially Jim Burke, the network marketing mentor. And I think what happens today is, see, I think you should approach personal development and get as many as much input from as many people as you possibly can. But when it comes to network marketing or any other business model, you need to go through everybody that you can hear and figure out who's going to be my mentor and then plug into what they're doing, their systems, their programs, and put your blinders on because if you don't, it's only going to create confusion. And again, I'm giving you this process because I have personally been through this many times since I started in network marketing. I didn't understand this when I started in network marketing, but I became to I, I started to understand it down the road, and I've used this process multiple times over my life. So the real question I ask myself today is, why are traditional business owners uh, more likely to understand the need for a mentor than a network marketer is? That's an interesting question for me. And I've looked at it from every angle that I possibly can. And the only thing that I can come up with why traditional business owners understand that it's common knowledge. If you want to stack the odds for success, then you need a mentor, not multiple mentors teaching different concepts, ideas and philosophies. But you need one mentor. You need to figure out who that is and get plugged in. Why is that? Why do traditional business owners kind of get that or most network marketers don't? And for me, it's just common sense. It just makes sense. The right mentor can save years off your journey without question, provided you're willing to do the work. And that's in any business model. So the only thing that I say is I as, as I think about it, and I would love any kind of input feedback on this because I think it's widespread. You know, what percent of network markers would you say do not have one mentor? Are, are, you know, there's a lot to listen to everybody. You know, they listen to, they listen to a bunch of people with day jobs trying to teach them how to build a team and they've never built it. I mean, are, are people that made a lot of money but never taught anybody else to make a lot of money? I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me. I mean, we did a, we did a, a survey on finding out who people's mentors are, which I cover in the article I'm going to share with you. And it blew my mind. Honestly, it was disturbing. It's like, how can people be that so off track? 
It was amazing to me. And then it's like, why would somebody think they don't need any mentor? And then the only thing I, I thought about was well, it just must come down to cost. Because of so many that were, well, I came in this to make money, not to spend money on some mentoring or, or personal development or, or whatever. And, you know, and then I go back and say, okay, well, Dale, let's look at the, and I look at the training club. I mean, it's like, my gosh, you know, people go through 18 months of that, of that and they really, you know, engage in that. They're going to know more than, they're going to know more in 18 months than I knew after 10 years in this profession of, of real, what really it takes not a bunch of fluff, and, but the real fundamentals, the real foundation on which they can build a multi-million dollar team. They're going to know at the end of 18 months. And, and it's like, you know, it should be, it should be, how can you put a price on that? Well, Dale, what if, look, it has a double your money back guarantee. You go through the 18 months, at the end of 18 months, if you did not get your money's worth, through the audio CDs and the back office and everything that we do for training club members, then we have a double your money back guarantee. So, so to me, it's just common sense. And again, this is not a pitch for the training club, but it is a pitch that you need a mentor. And, and if you knew how much I didn't care who it was, the, the only reason I care is because I know, Many of many mentors in this profession and in other niches, all they're doing is providing these shortcuts that lead nowhere. Other than that, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. So I ask you, do you have a network marketing mentor? Do you? I hope that you realize after reading the article I'm going to share with you and and going through the the article that I just quoted from, from Forbes magazine, which is also, I'm giving you the link that you'll really spend some time here because, uh, as I look back, you know, the impact that the right men, the right mentors have had in my life, it's, it cannot be communicated. So how many hours a week are you devoting right now? You let's say you have a mentor. How many hours a week are you devoting right now? to income producing activities in your business. I didn't say how many hours are you putting in your business. I said, how many hours are you devoting, devoting to income producing activities in your business, creating leads, following up. That's all it is. If you're not creating leads and following up, there's not that those are, you're, those are not income producing activities. You know, there's people that spend 15, 20 hours a week being on every conference call they can be on every webinar they can be on you know, reading every book the new some gurus come out with, uh, they spend a lot of time and there's and I believe in education time more than anybody. I spend a lot of time myself on education, multiple hours, uh, many hours every single week. But how much time are you spending on income producing activities? And if you're not truthfully spending at least five consistent hours. Five is the bare minimum per week on income producing activities. Why not? Why not? And before I go any further, I would really like for you to think to yourself, why am I not spending at least five hours a week on creating leads or following up with those leads? Because that's what produces income ultimately, those activities brought into your comfort zone and getting into a rhythm with those activities is what's ultimately going to produce success. You know, I've talked about many times when I first started back in the day with Shackley and Jim, you know, Jim Burke and, and it's like, okay, Dale, here's the deal. You got, you got to schedule 31 on ones, 31 on ones a month from those 30, about 15 are probably going to stand you up. They're not going to meet you at Denny's like they were supposed to, or you're going to go to their house and you're because you have the appointment scheduled at 730 and you're going to knock on their door and they're not going to come to the door. Or they're not going to be there, but you'll finish 15. And if you can do 15 appointments a week, then you know that you'll sponsor at least five people. And if you sponsor five people a month, then you can control your financial destiny in this profession. 
and that w it's it really is that simple. But so I wasn't spending, you know, m the number one priority for my month every month way back to Shackley. Once I figure some of this stuff out, was I've got to be spending my time on income producing activities, which back in the day was sitting around with a pitch book. This is before VHS guys, with the pitch book scheduling appointments. I got enough, I had that be generated enough, enough leads so when I sit down Sunday night to make my phone calls to schedule out my week, you know, I, I had to have enough appointments. I had to have, you know, eight, seven to eight appointments scheduled every week to hit my 30 every month to be able to complete my 15 to be able to sponsor my five. It's it's just you back it, back it up. So, again, you know, how many hours are you consistently spending every week on income producing activities? So here's the network marketing paradox. Remember, this is the mentorship paradox. This is the mentorship paradox. On one end, you have fear. Fear. And, and fear can be, there's many types of fear. The most common, obviously, in our business is fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of what somebody else is thinking. That's the three most common. But as it relates to mentorship, especially if it's one-on-one -on -one mentorship, there can also be a fear of accountability, fear of disappointing your mentor. There's a lot of fear on one end of the spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum is self-reliance, where I don't need a mentor. I can do this myself. I, I, can, I, can, I don't need a mentor. Look, even Tiger, Tiger Woods had a mentor. Tiger Woods had a coach. All successful people, especially entrepreneurs, learn from mentors. Now, again... It doesn't have to be one-on-one -on -one communication. It can be through audio cassettes. That's certainly how I learned from Jim Rohn, Jim Burke, and Zig. It doesn't have to be one-on-one. -on -one. You know, it doesn't. But self-reliance is for fools. It just is. And yes... There's a lot of three percenters in network marketing that enter this profession with transferable skill sets, mindsets, work ethic, credibility, connections where they could get something started off the ground. But down the road, they run into all types of problems. You can see this documented over and over and over and over and over again because at some point they realize it ain't about me. It's about what can be duplicated on my team. And then they just have a bunch of, they have a huge following, but nobody's duplicating. And there's no future leaders being developed on their team. I've said it 10,000 times. But the main point that I want you to think about when we're done with this session is, where, where are you on the scale as it relates to your attitude and feeling towards mentorship? Fear one end, self-reliance on the other. Because if you fear going into the marketplace and implementing that which, which is shared with you by a mentor, then you're wasting your time to thy own self be true. And I've, I've had people that I've worked with and they just found, you know, they still, I'm just, you know, I, I just uncomfortable. I'm just scared, man. It's just, I, I have this fear of rejection. I'm afraid of what they're going to say. I'm afraid I'm not going to know how to answer the objection. And I said, well, then let's just back up and let's start. Let's start right there. Let's just start on reprogramming your mind because you've got to get past that because you're, you're always going to be limited if you have those type of self-limiting uh, beliefs programmed in your mind. So that's where we start. So everybody's a little bit different. Everybody comes into this with different backgrounds, skills, uh, different authority figures that they've had throughout their life. They grew up in different environments. Everybody's different. So... The three steps to identifying the right mentor in any business niche. Like I said, I've done this multiple times over the years. And the first thing that you have to do is look who are the real players. 
who are the real players? That's the first thing. And I, again, I've done, I've done this this past well, I started this back in uh, August September last year, and spent August September October four months going through every single player I could find in, in a particular niche that, you know, I've dilly daddy dilly daddy dilly daddy whatever I'm trying to say. I've screwed around, messed around in for 15, 20 years, but I never got serious, never got focused, never really realized the true upside potential of the market and what can really be done. And I've always loved it. It's been fascinating. Uh, but I spent, you know, months, four months, reading, studying, learning, reading the books, watching everything I could get my hands on, on trying to figure out who the players are in this particular niche because I knew I needed to have a mentor. And uh, I could eliminate people real quickly because as soon as they start talking stuff that just makes absolutely no common sense whatsoever, which is so common in network marketing that we don't even recognize it anymore. <laughs> but I can eliminate, 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 and then you get it down. So you figure out, okay, here's the players. And then you look behind the curtain. So who are the players? The players are the people that have a track record for creating financial success within a niche, within a business niche. So who are the players? Like if we were going to talk about franchising, which we're not, but if we were, we could say, okay, McDonald's, you know, we can name the six, who the players are, okay, in that niche. So that's the first thing I want to do is figure out who the players are. Once you identify the players, then I want to look behind the curtain. Okay, how many courses do they have? On what different aspects of the niche do they have courses on? Do they do they have coaching programs? And I'm just trying to figure out, okay, what are they actually teaching within the market? Okay, and and then the most important thing is who have they taught who's created success that's the next thing who are their students that's who i really want to talk to but i mean it but and and i can eliminate usually about 50 percent of the people from that point so if i've got a list of six and then i move into step two step one's figure out who the players are step two look behind the curtain and i look and i say well yeah this guy's written three books he's done this he's done this but he's making all his money just selling his material. It's not because he's not done or taught anybody else to do what he's trying to teach others to do in the market. Uh, you know, as it relates to network marketing, who has he personally recruited, trained, and got to a full time income? Again, just asking that question in network marketing would eliminate 90% of the people trying to teach people how to do this business. Yeah, they made a lot of money, but it was teaching other. It was it was from selling their stuff. So, in my most recent example, uh, I did I did take my list and it was like eight and eliminated it to two. And then, the third part of the net, the third part of this process that I've done many times, is I ask myself, what is their why? What is their why? Why are they doing this? Is this their main source of income? Are, are, are you know, do they have other business interests? Uh, you know, why are they doing this? Is their whole focus, is, is their whole, and again, this comes down, are they value focused? Or are they money focused? Are they income focused? Are they doing this obviously for the money? Are they doing this to provide value to their market? And those are the three questions I go through. And usually within that, those three questions, I can figure out, okay, this is the person I need to be talking to. In the article I share with you, I talk about Shopify stores, which we went through probably two or three years ago, went through this evaluation stage. And, and I came up with who is the number one Shopify teacher, speaker, trainer in the profession. And I talk about it in the article. And, and here's the one thing that's really kind of thought-provoking, it's usually not the ones 
with the biggest following. In the Shopify example I give in the article, uh, the guy that we chose is definitely does not have the biggest following. There's a lot more people that are just blasting YouTube every day and writing articles every day that have a huge, lot larger following than the guy that's number one at teaching others how. Uh, but here's the reason why, and this will be a paradigm shift for some of you, what I'm getting ready to say. Those with the big, why do they have the biggest following if they're not the best? Because sheep flock. Sheep flock. Eagles don't flock. You find them one at a time. And human nature is they want to. They, human nature is we're all twelve-year-old kids who want to be part of the cool kids clique, and we we figure out who the cool kids are based upon where the crowds are. And in reality, that's where the sheep flock. And you can you can apply this principle, the sheep flock, to any business niche, any business niche, and any business niche, and you'll see if that's where most of the people are, that's probably not where I should be. Not always, but most of the time. Because sheep flock. You don't want to be around the sheep. You want to be where the eagles are. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good, guys, if I say so, I do say so myself. I mean, that's just good stuff because it's just so true. It's just so true. But, you know, those that like to, to create herds of sheep don't like that. So, uh, finding the right mentor in any business niche, those are the three steps that I go through. I've done it multiple times, I've done it recently, I've done it many times when I'm trying to learn something new. And I don't care what it is. If it's, you know, learning how to teach my, uh, how to coach my grandson's soccer team, I would go through the exact same steps. I don't care what it is because. I never played soccer. I was a baseball player. I don't. I didn't play soccer. I don't know anything about soccer. So if I'm, I'm going to have to figure out who are the players, and and teaching soccer coaches. It's the same process. It's like, it's it's for the same reason that I can't imagine. I can't imagine a kid, a talented kid, that has the opportunity to play college basketball and has the opportunity to go to the University of Kentucky and they don't go to Kentucky when Cal has put more kids in the NBA than everybody else put together? How can that happen? Something's not right. And again, it usually goes back to uh, ego, greed, because they know if they come and play for ta Cal, they're not going to shoot all the shots. They're going to learn how to play as a team because Kyle understands T-E-A-M, together, everyone achieves more. And boy, I could, I could really preach on all that. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm going to jump off here. But here's what I want to tell you guys. Um, in, I wrote an article. I'm going, to give you the, I'm going to give you the link, and I'll put it in the show notes. And I hope you'll go visit. I love your feedback. I get into a lot more detail in this article. Uh, I give you the uh, link to the Forbes article that I shared with you earlier. Uh, I give you the results of the network marketing survey that we took uh, that had absolutely unbelievable, scary responses. Uh, it was honestly, it was just discouraging uh, to think how in the world could people that are calling themselves network marketing leaders, entrepreneurs. How could they have gotten so far off track? I also share with you the link to the real lost secret of network marketing success. It is the lost secret to network marketing success. It is. Link to that. Uh, I also share with you um, more information about the success principle that the Internet has stolen. Uh, I get into detail about when you follow in any niche, when you def 
follow deceitful mentors and you realize and you know they're deceitful and it's obvious that they're deceitful when you when you follow deceitful mentors what happens is it creates a culture that's hard to leave but easy to defend it's like if six months before you joined it, you wouldn't have defended it because you would be obvious to see what was going on. But now that you've, you've come down this path, then it, it puts you in a bad situation as an entrepreneur because you realize I'm in this de- deceitful culture, but you defend it. Because if you admit that it's deceitful, then you're, it, it shows negative on you. So you just defend that which you know not to be true. It's really interesting, guys. You start studying this and looking at human nature from that standpoint. But, you know, so in this article, I also talk about when you find yourself in that situation, you got to eliminate potential mentors as quickly as you possibly can. That's what in any niche, any niche, eliminate potential mentors as quickly as you possibly can because if you before you know it you're in a culture that is deceitful and then you you find yourself defending that which you know not to be true so uh it, the article is worth reading i wanted to kind of hit the highlights on this podcast let me give you the link and i'll put it in the, the show notes as well and here's what i'm going to do this week just for something different I'm going to give away a free T-shirt. I'm going to give away a free T-shirt. This is a spur of the moment thing, but I want to do this because I really would like feedback on this. And again, there's so much more that I couldn't cover here. It's in this article. It's at MLMHelp.com forward slash network slash or dash marketing dash mentor. MLMHelp.com forward slash network dash marketing dash mentor. And I know many of you are, are driving your truck or are in your car or out walking your dog right now while you're hearing this. Don't forget to visit the website. Put an X on your hand. You know, do something right now to make sure that you go check out this article. Leave me your feedback. If you totally don't like anything about the article, that's cool. Let me know. But go check out the article. And what I'm going to do is I'll have one of the staff members uh, look at the feedback that we get, any kind of response that we get on the article, choose one of you, and we'll announce it uh, in a couple of weeks, and we'll give away a free momsuccess.com podcast T-shirt. Uh, we'll be contacting you, uh, getting your shipping address, size, that type of thing. We'll give away a free T-shirt this week. That'll be fun. Uh, guys, I appreciate you listening. I hope that you'll you'll uh, also on that, where the article is, we also, for those of you that haven't seen the intro to Jim Rohn, the first time, not the second time. The second one's gone. I don't think it was ever recorded. But, but, but what I said script that I went off is there. Uh, you can go check that out. That's in the article as well. Thanks for listening, guys. I appreciate you more than you know. Don't watch the news. Wash your hands. Grind. Enjoy. Learn all you can. This is a time when you can look back and say, you know, during that coronavirus time, I was able to learn this, internalize this, and it took my, my business and my life to a completely different level that has served me well from that point forward. That's my hope for you. You guys have an awesome day, night. Wherever you are in the world, this is Dale Calvert, and I'll talk to you next week on another session of MOMSuccess.com, the MOMSuccess.com podcast. If you haven't gone over to iTunes yet and rated and left this podcast a review, what are you waiting for? At Calvert Marketing Group, we want to spend our time on the projects that we know are providing the most value for our clients and customers. You leaving us a review and feedback on iTunes is something that helps us more than you realize. And more importantly, it helps others like you find us. 
So if you've not taken the time to rate this podcast, please go over to iTunes and do that for us now. It will only take a couple of minutes out of your busy schedule. Work harder on yourself than you do on your business, and we will be back next week with another inspiring success story, wisdom of the ages training, or answers to your questions.